Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this one, we're going to show you the step-by-step -step procedure for recovering refrigerant from an HVAC system. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Now, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so I just quickly want to run you guys through um, exactly what we need in terms of our equipment to do this recovery. Um, the first thing you're going to notice, going through this really quickly, we've got an A-gas recovery cylinder, which is serviceable, and they get returned to them um, as soon as they are full, and then we obviously get the recovery um, certificate from them uh, once we send that in and they've analyzed the contents of the bottle. We've got a value scale to work out exactly how much gas is being recovered. That's obviously an important process because by recovering the gas, we can, and measuring how much gas we've recovered, you can actually see exactly how much gas was in the system and whether or not the system had been undercharged or there is potentially a leak. And I have to say that that is a very important and process and, and it really helps when you're doing, for example, compressor change that helps just to diagnose exactly why the compressor failed. Then over here we have a JB Industries F6 recovery unit. It's a very good unit, very quiet. You see it's got a little filter dryer attached just to kind of catch any type of moisture and things I get that, that may be coming through just so that we don't damage the internal parts. And that filter has to be changed quite regularly. Um, it's recommended that you change it after every recovery. And then on the actually AC unit itself, um, as you can see, we've got the manifold set, which is attached to a core removal tool, which is pretty much standard procedure. Uh, because that, you know, that Schrader valve inside there, that Schrader core creates a real big restriction. So with evacuation and with recovery, um, it creates such a big restriction that the process just takes extremely long. So it's always a good practice to remove that core using a core removal tool uh, just to make the process go a lot quicker so before we start the recovery i do need to mention something that's probably the most important part of sort of your pre-checks when it comes to the recovery of uh, refrigerants which is the cylinder over here um, this is like i said this is an a gas cylinder and if you look on the side of the cylinder they're nice enough to sort of print out the tear and how much um, gas you can actually recover into the cylinder before it becomes hazardous. Now, when we look on the cylinder itself, it gives us a T volume of 9.15 kilograms and it can hold 8.25 kilograms of recovered refrigerant. The thing that I'm not 100% certain of, and I should check that with a gas, is whether or not that 8.25 kilograms is the actual amount that you can charge or if that's the amount that it can hold because good practice when it comes to recovery is to only charge 80 percent of the amount that the bottle can hold so i'm not sure if that 8.25 is already 80 percent of the um, volume of the bottle or if we still have to charge to 80 percent of that amount to be on the safe side um, i really charge to 80 percent of that 8.25 so the first thing we have to do before we can start recovery as actually just to figure out how much gas is in the cylinder currently and how much gas we can still charge and just to make sure that there is enough space in the cylinder for the additional gas that we are about to charge or recover into that cylinder. So if we do the math, the 8.25 kilograms and the 9.15 kilograms, if we add it together, which would be the, the cylinder weight as well as the weight that you can charge into the cylinder it gives us a total of 17.4 kilograms which means the maximum weight that the cylinder should ever be is 17.4 kilograms but again because i'm not certain whether or not the 8.25 is actual reference to the 80 percent or if that is the complete available space we're just going to go to 80 percent of that amount and if you do the math, 80% of the 17.4 is 13.92 kilograms. So to be on the safe side, we're not going to charge the cylinder any higher than 13.92 kilograms, because obviously as the cylinder heats up in different ambient temperature conditions, you might get to a point where the gas is going to expand because the bottle is heating up 
um, and that is just basic safety of refrigerants um, knowledge and we've obviously got to adhere to that. So if we look at that number again, we allow to charge 13.92 kilograms in the cylinder or the complete weight of the cylinder can't go beyond 13.92 kilograms. If we look at the current weight of the cylinder, it's 10.68 kilograms, which means when you do the math and you deduct that amount from the, the, the maximum volume that we're gonna take the cylinder to, you're looking at a difference of 3.24 kilograms, which means there's 3.24 kilograms worth of space still in the cylinder. So if we just go to the actual air conditioning unit and we just look at the tally plate, you'll see that it's got R14 and the, the, the refrigerant charge is 0 0.59 kilograms, which means theoretically there is over enough space in the cylinder to recover the complete volume of this air conditioning unit. It's a back-to-back -back unit, as you can see. The indoor unit is right inside this wall, so there's not going to be much additional gas, if any, in the system, which means the 3.24 kilograms worth of space is plenty to recover the full volume of this gas. So let's get to the process. Okay, so even though these uh, recovery units are pretty rugged, um, and this one I do know has a fail safe, it has a, an overload uh, when it comes to high pressure overload and the amount of liquid that you can actually push through here and actually will, there's an internal safety device which will trip in the event that you, you're getting too much liquid in the system or going through the recovery unit. So even though we have those safeties in place, we do kind of try and as best as possible throttle the refrigerant that goes through the unit just so that we don't do any damage to the internal parts. Now on this particular recovery unit, I mean, each unit is obviously different, but on this particular one, you see the, high, the low pressure valve and the high pressure valve, which is obviously this is the inlet valve and the outlet valve, which pushes out towards the cylinder. So as we start the process, we obviously make sure that the cylinder is open, which it is. The discharge side is in the recovery position and the suction side is closed for now. Okay. You'll also find that my cage manifold is in a closed position and this is actually where we're going to throttle the amount of liquid that we're going to push through this unit. What often happens and what I also tend to do is I do sort of open this very gradually um, but the easiest way to do this would just actually be to start the unit open this up all the way and then throttle the, the, the volume of refrigerant through the actual manifold set. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's open, that's open. We've got the cylinder open. As you can see, the unit has gone into vacuum. So now we can just basically and you will immediately hear the unit sounds a bit louder and also the gauge is called the product of our vacuum. So we can again just throttle this open a little bit, just speed it up just a bit and you'll see that pressure goes up. So the suction pressure is going up there and the, the discharge pressure going towards the cylinder is also going up. So what I usually do is I just let it run this way for a little bit, you can actually throttle it up just a little bit more. You can usually tell when you listen to the actual recovery unit, you can actually tell when she's taking a bit of strain. Um, it's a very noticeable sort of hard gurgling sound and that usually tells you that there's too much liquid going through at the time. So what I usually do is I just leave it as such, as long as we've got enough pressure there, she's pushing through on the other side, and as you can see, she's dropping quite quickly, even with me having throttled the valve. 
you can open it a little bit more and you can actually tell that the sound on the unit hasn't gone up a whole lot pressure dropping quite nicely there pressure dropping here so it's quite obvious that the recovery unit isn't taking any strain whatsoever so we're just going to watch this and let this run for a few minutes as you can see she's dropping quite quickly she's getting very close to zero the recovery unit is already just about zero which means she's, she's pulling quite hard and getting that gas recovered really quickly if you then look at the scale very important to watch the scale at all times to make sure we're not going above our threshold and as as mentioned before she can take she can go up to about 13 kilograms so we quite far away from that and we're quite safe and we're not going to hit that threshold. Then just above zero. And the manifold set just above zero. Um, obviously for, for us to drop the manifold all the way to zero, this is going to have to go into a slide back. So let's keep an eye on her and let's see what happens. Alright, so as predicted, she's gone just below into a slide vacuum on the recovery unit. And when we go and look at the gauge, she's also just about below zero. And what often happens is as you close the gauge, she'll go up a little bit. So let's just see if that is the case. perfect so as we close the gauge she's holding there's no more gas in the system and the next step over here as you see this particular recovery unit has a purge function so the next step here is to basically swing both valves to the purge function which is then going to auto purge the unit so she's basically removing the loss of the refrigerant that's in the actual recovery unit and sending it to the cylinder. So as soon as she reaches zero and we close her off and she holds, that's it. You can switch off. And that's it guys, that's simple. All the gas has been recovered from the unit. Gauges are sitting at zero. Recovery unit is sitting slightly in vacuum, which is fine. And basically we've moved all the refrigerant from inside the system and inside the recovery unit into the cylinder. Okay. So we've recovered all the gas and we've got the cylinder up to 11.11 kilograms, which if you deduct it from the weight that it was at before, we're looking at about 470, 480 grams of refrigerant that was recovered, which is according to the tally plate again on the unit itself, is about 100 grams short of a full charge. So, so the unit was slightly short of gas, but just by 100 grams or so. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.